And it's a great uh, pleasure and honor to come back to DASP and give this talk. Okay, so the title of this talk today is Making Land Fly. It is about a new phenomenon that's called urban land quota markets in response to China's uh, growth management strategy. Demolishing peasant houses and moving them into higher density apartment buildings is not something very rare, right? We see this actually a lot happening around the world on urban periphery when the city expands and the rural land is taken for urban expansion. So in other words, by concentrating peasants in higher density apartments and reverting their construction land back for farming, the village has reduced its uh, built up footprint, right? So there's more farmland, but less built up. So the village has saved some development land. And this saved development land is registered as land quotas. And in Chongqing municipality, which is a big metropolis in Western China alone, between 2008 and 2013, that's five years, 670,000 households, not people, households, were resettled because of such uh, efforts. And the phenomenon has been really controversial. Is it making the land markets more efficient or is it further the distorting it? Is it pro-peasants or hurting peasants? And that really probed my interest in studying um, the land quota market. So in urban spatial economics, for example, we all learn in our very um, basic urban economics class that proximity determines land prices, right? Proximity is positively correlated um, with land prices. The closer you are to the center of urban economics uh, activities, the higher the prices are. But this case, think of Grandma Wu's village, which is very remotely located, might suggest that uh, proximity is reversely correlated with uh, land prices. It might be that the, the more remote a village is, the more likely that the land will be consolidated and the land rights sold on the market. This slide is China Land Politics 101, okay? So I think this audience, many members of this audience may be very familiar with this, but you know, in, in China, when you want to convert rural land to urban land, it's not just a change in the use type, rural versus urban, it's also a change in ownership. In other words, the government is buying low from the peasants and selling high to the uh, end users in the city. The quota is a number that's given to local government each year, and that sets the maximum area of rural land to be converted to urban land each year. When a city expands, it takes land from the villages around it, right? But with a quota constraint, a city cannot expand as much as it wants. It has to stay within the constraint. What is of most interest to us is the dark blue areas, which represent the houses, the scattered houses. Th that it is the village center, okay? but there are many uh, scattered houses in the village. That's before the land consolidation project, before the land quota markets, and this is after. But actually, the land occupied by the new village center is only one third of all the land occupied by the houses before the change. That instruction that were built up has flied from deep rural area to the urban fringe, and farmland has flied back to the village, okay? So this is just summarizing my explanation. Same price for quota, no matter of location, but remoteness rather than proximity increases the likelihood of land consolidation, and the most rural areas get densified first. But in the rural uh, areas, in the deep rural areas, think of uh, people like Grand Ma Wu, it's mixed, okay? So first of all, yes, they have better housing conditions, and they do have better infrastructure and services, but it's a lifestyle, uh, I used adjustment, adjustment there, but it's a lifestyle shock for, to them overnight. The quota market was um, started in the suburban counties as a way to get around this central constraint, but now they are bypassed again by market forces. So in my opinion, it only reinforces the dominance of municipality over counties. I learn a lot from her work uh, professionally and it's just grown more, growing more and more sophisticated every time I read it. So this. what's happening with both land quotas as well as the transfer of development rights, the TDR, is that land is not being exchanged in the market, right? This physical material commodity of land is not being exchanged, but land ownership is delinked from use rights in the China case or development rights in the New York and Mumbai case and a new market is being created of use. So development rights 
are becoming an extremely important form of revenue generation for local governments, which means land then becomes a very, it takes on a different role within the political economy of exactly. organization and that has to be underscored.